Let's get some insights in the news shaping the markets. For that, we welcome in Phil Blancato is here, Chief Market Strategist, joining us with, tell me your firm. Osaic. Osaic, okay. We this were, way uh, I made sure to pronounce it correctly, That's too. Okay. Thank well, you, Phil, for that. It's nice to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been welcome too long, back too to long. Nice to see you as well. Um, so we're wrapping up the first quarter. We're, you know, we're not too far off the highs. Everybody's talking about one, two, three cuts. What are your thoughts? You know, I think you got to be really careful if you're betting that the Fed's going to cut and that's why you're buying stocks. I wouldn't do that right now. I, mm. I think you got to look at right. where's the opportunity to win. I'll give you a fun example. If you look at where we were last year, NASDAQ versus Dow, it was a 17% spread at the end of the first quarter. This year, it's only about five. So you're seeing a broadening of the market out. So let me be less worried about what the Fed is or isn't going to do. I'm in the camp. They're not going to do anything until very late in the year. Ah. Inflation is still too stubborn. You look at the jobs that it clearly suggests that people are finding jobs, getting a higher wage. That's going to be very difficult for the Fed to control. So I think they push it out later. Are you in the one, are you in the one cut I'm camp? I'm in the one cut camp. Yep. And that's after the election, to get out of the election cycle. Right. And, but more importantly, the data doesn't suggest that they're there yet. And we continue, to, we'll get PCE tomorrow. I don't think it's going to meet the Fed's expectations, at least not yet. But, but even if, leave all that aside for a minute. Focus on where there's real opportunity. It is the broadening out of the market away from what was the MAG 7, and now we're down to the Fabulous 5, and I think it's going to right. be a fantastic 4 is the way to go. So, yeah, and you notice that you just, one of your takeaways was that the market has moved up, not just mm -hmm. with the MAG-7. Exactly. Um, is that part of the investment strategy for 2024? Don't just be in those names. Um, have a diversification, or do you love those names and some other names? How do you do it? I, I, I would urge the investors to please take some profits. You know, if you didn't take profits in Tesla, feel, 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 what's the pain now? Or in Apple. Or, or some of the other names that look to me a little bit shaky. For, I'm not thrilled the way Amazon and Google are shaping up right uh. now. So I would be willing to keep an eye on them. My point is, when you make these kind of returns in the video, let's just go with the hottest name out there, up 80% the year to date. When you have those kind of returns, take some profits and pivot where you're getting better value. Why? In an environment where the Fed does finally get out of the way and inflation calls down, what's going to do well? Mid-sized companies and small size, small size companies. However, I want you to think of this year's markets bifurcated. That trade is the second half of the year. I love the small cap trade, it's just not yet. What I would do now through the uh, September yeah. is own the dividends. Buy dividend stocks. Why I think the market's going to be quite volatile between now and uh, election season. Oh, that's so funny because I actually was looking the other day, um, I, I could pull it up, but it was all about which companies pay dividends and you can actually get paid every single month if you plan it right and pick right. the right companies. Um, you know, I just don't have it handy, but it was it was sort of exciting when I looked at it. I said, wow, this is the way to do it. Um, here it is. So if you wanted to do January, uh, Thermo Fisher, Cisco, February, you would have Starbucks, UPS, and so on. Uh, McDonald's in March, and, and um, it, it just was great. Don't forget Visa, the banks. IBM, and, and Verizon, City. Uh, you know, and Pepsi. I, the bank and the energy companies are all paying you a 2 to 4% dividend. Guess what, folks? You're being paid to wait around. I know it's yeah. been a good market, yeah. but nothing's infallible. We get three corrections every year at 5%. We're one of 10. You've got lots of reasons why the second quarter could be really tough. Less consumer spending. Obviously, it's high, still higher inflation. I'm worrying about the impact of higher interest rates. A weakening of the job labor market a bit. All those that portray, portray into a more volatile market. So get paid to wait around in companies that are cheaper than NVIDIA. Let me ask you about this, because we've gotten in some data today. We're waiting on the PCE tomorrow, which you mentioned. But um, in the data today, we've got claims and we got um, sentiment. Sentiment a little brighter. In mm -hmm. fact, the, uh, the, the highest level since July of 2021 at 79.4 in March, up from 76.9 in February. The outlook for inflation comes down. Over five years, it comes down. Um, I, you know, I like to hear people feeling good. It, it, you know, it's a feel good. Yeah. It drives things if people are feeling good. Yeah. But at the same time, they're charging up on their credit cards. They're digging into the 401ks. How do you feel about the consumer? Do you think they're going to be in some sort of shock later in the year or no? Let's, let's cut them in two. The retirees are fine. They have 61% of the country's wealth. If you look at Carnival Cruise Lines or Viking Cruise Lines or any of the major events, yeah. they're all packed. Yeah. Yeah. So the wealthiest Americans are fine. Those folks who are not, they did get a, you, you, most folks who are making less than 100000 a year got a 5% raise per year over the last three years. So they're better than what they were. They had a nice lift off after COVID. But to your point, the reset of inflation higher is still very difficult. So while sentiment's a bit better, 
consumer spending drives the U.S. economy. And, and we're not in a scenario where wages are going to get so significant that it's going to drive significant more spending or significant more confidence. Yes, mm -hmm. inflation's come down finally after a huge reset. But go buy eggs, go buy meat, go to a restaurant. It's still very expensive. And that's not going to change for a long time. So I don't think the consumer is going to be so robust that it keeps us out of a, it puts us into a, a 4% or 3% GDP. Right. Even today, the re re revision was still in that three and a quarter range, but I would expect this to slow down back to two the rest of this year. I don't know that you're able to do stock picks, are you? I mean, do you have certain names that you like? Sure, and if, sure. if, if you have some names that you think are probably a good go-to, uh, we'd love if you could, we could hear some of those. Sure, I'll give you some examples. I, I, I think of JP Morgan, which today is a company that has, they have, can you imagine, the amount they have in cash matches their debt. They are completely insulated from any situation where we'd have any real banking shock because of default. Mm. They pay a very nice dividend of over 2%. Right. The company's still trading at, uh, at, revenue, at, at a multiple to me that makes sense of where banks are. But more importantly, you look at their expected revenue, earning per share growth could be as much as 17%. So this is a company you can really use as a defensive play. So I like it for that sense a lot. For me, it yeah. makes sense. With me. I do like a crowd strike. The reason why is CrowdStrike, even though it's had a tremendous run, I get it. If you've made some money, it's never, never a bad idea to take some profits. But if you don't own it, the reason why I like it, their com combination of NVIDIA plus them and that AI chip is powerful. Mm. That could put the company another leg higher. And believe it or not, 94% of their revenue is reoccurring. So you don't have to worry about their revenue. It's just a matter of can they push the multiple higher, and I think it's a long-term play. Right, right. And then the last one I'd go, is your own company Schwab? I oh. think the stock is a very strong stock. It's got an excellent balance sheet, pays a nice dividend. The company looks like it. It's got tremendous cash assets. As long as interest rates stay higher for longer, which I think they will, they make money on the cash reserves, if the company's trading fairly inexpensive. By the way, two defensive names I gave you, and one opportunistic, back to that mindset. I want you to have balance in your portfolio. I want you to earn some dividend to wait this out and take chances on good quality companies that are not totally overvalued. All right, thank you for all of that. Phil Blancato of Osaic, thank you for being here today. Appreciate it and some good picks for you folks.